Hello, my name is Corey Capron, as uh, many of you either know or have surmised, and uh, this is my introduction to my Dracula score. As some of you already know, uh, a while back I worked with my wife on a production of Dracula that fell apart, and my jobs on that were ranged from building props to assistant directing. Um, one of the things I volunteered to do was initially make uh, an atmospheric soundscape for it. Uh, the model of the show was to be more minimalistic, rely more on lighting and sound than an expensive set because we didn't really have the budget for it at the time. Uh, and also it just seemed like it would be a good way to have the show focus more on the actors than um, the uh, spectacle. So I, that, that's what I said I could do, and I started to do, and um, along the way I kind of poked around with some of the, the existing uh, sample functions um, and realized that I could use them as models, not just take one of GarageBand's samples um, and play that and go, oh, I have a bass riff, riff. but um, realize that you know, well, there's a model for tempo now. What if I take these notes, shift them up here, shift these down here, um, put it through a few different filters, and uh, on a structural level and a sonic level, I, I could create something that was nothing like what was originally offered. Um, it was a totally new piece of uh, music, um, but because I had kind of followed these templates that these other works... Um, that GarageBand allows you to use. Uh, I'm referring to loop tracks. Um, uh, provided, it was a very easy way to start learning how to make music. And um, with the digital sheet music functions, uh, I did a lot of just painstaking moving tiles around, as I like to call them, the little digital representations of notes. Um, you know, it, it started out almost like mosaics, but with time and a lot of painstaking, you know, hearing the same second of music over and over and over again, um, I started making piano compositions and orchestral compositions and all types of other things. And I also had a piano and a bass here that I could manipulate. And over time, it started to really look like this kind of robust score. I've done stuff with GarageBand since, and I can see a lot more of the the amateur mistakes that I had in that, and I'm still a long ways off from um, being anything but an amateur. But uh, it, it was kind of impressive what, in the span of about two months, I was able to get rolling, really only, um, I'd say 70% of it being the last month, once I'd kind of gotten a momentum, and uh, a couple weeks from uh, opening night, or what would have been opening night. So, um, this this is not a finished work, though. Um, it's where it was the day of the last rehearsal. And so there was probably three or four more tracks um, I was going to do, because what most of these are is scene transitions. Uh, there are ambient works that spill over a scene. Um, there are works that are soundscapes for the scene. Um, for example, the just like um, the cricket, the crickets chirping uh, in a graveyard, so that you can tell it's a graveyard. Um, but most of these are really short pieces for transitions, and um, a lot of the ones I had, especially ones that had vocal tracks, I wanted to redo. And just sound mixing stuff. I'm, I'm still having a, long, a lot of trouble uh, getting sound mixing right. Mostly because for some reason with my computer... Excuse me. Um, when I finish a work in GarageBand and then import it to iTunes, it sounds very different. Um, it sounds muted. Um, it has a lot of trouble dealing with the bass because I keep doing these really, you know thunderous, um, high reverb bass tracks, uh, mostly because I, I, I like doing, making things sound more alien, um, at least in this and the production I'm working on now. 
so it's uh, it's yeah, it, 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 these are demo tracks. Even if some of them probably were going to go directly into the production, um, it's very rough. Uh, but it is what it is, and I'm actually very proud of it. Um, if I ever did a production of Dracula again, uh, I would use most of this, or uh, I might, you know, cut it up and mix it up and use it again in another uh, production with my wife uh, for something else. I, I don't know, but I, I am very pleased with what I was able to do um, with very limited experience. And I think that's kind of the beauty of technology like GarageBand, which uh, obviously there's more advanced uh, music software out there, but uh, something like that that you can just pick up. Um, you know, it, it, I, I think it even comes free with some Macs. And uh, just learn how to make small, low-budget projects um, in a very punk rock, do-it-yourself sort of way happen. So um, that's about all I got. Uh, the rest of this is going to be just uh, text with the tracks. Uh, the first batch of them is probably, with the exception of a track called Quincy, um, the most still it was still being worked on at the time, but I'm going to put these not in the order that I composed and recorded them, or, well, it's one and the same with GarageBand, but uh, in the order of the scene structure, the narrative structure. So that's all I got. Uh, again, uh, sorry for the gigantic zit on my head that uh, you've probably been staring at like Austin Powers for the last uh, seven minutes, and uh, I will try to shape before I put up another video. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy. Bye.